shocking. Hello, welcome to the oh, Everton Daily Ever. Because I've just seen Ned's title for this. What is it? Brands reveals the shocking truth about Arteta to oh, Toffees. It is shocking. Though, you should have it? just left. Reveals the shocking truth about Arteta and yeah. then just left it. Yeah. That like Mikel Arteta likes Desperate Housewives or something they could have been. People might think we finally found the money. No, that money's gone. All the television programmes are available. Yeah, uh, yeah, he, context. yeah, he could have been anything. Shocking Ned. That's a belter of a title. It's a belter. Oh, I, I love shocking truth. You do I love the shocking. Ned I'm is an AI. Shocked. Yeah, I love it, Ned. So fair play to you. This is almost as good as the shocking truth about Teen Wolf. That was shocking. You got your camera. The on. team will. I've got my mic on. I've got yeah. my camera on. You should have your camera you got your on. Camera on. Oh, it's bad hair day. It's not just it's your hair. Just put it on. Crikey, Nedwin right, van der Sar. I've got to do work with no, me. Put it on now. Oh my god. god. Put it on now, Ned. Um, Tom. I Jane, I, I mean, we'll, we'll get on to our set. I just want to yeah. just quickly do that. No, actually, we'll come back to this, James. I will read it out. I promise you. But this um, Ned shocking truth headline. Is Marcel Brands has done an interview? And another one. Another one. Fair play to him. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping to interview him, so I hope he's in the mood for it. Yeah. Um, he's done an interview and he's revealed that he tried to get Mikel Arteta to Everton as manager when Marco Silva left. He had a crush on him, didn't he? He spent, well, listen, he was highly rated, wasn't yeah, yeah, he? And, yeah. uh, he spent the evening with him and was very, very excited that he was going to At Mikel's house. At Mikel's house. And then Everton. Went in a different direction, got Carlo Ancelotti instead. Is that he, what he said? He didn't say that, but he come back very excited. And then Evan got Carlo Ancelotti. Oh, which, that's more accurate. Which, Everton got Carlo Ancelotti rather than Evan went in a different direction. Well, Arteta then went to Arsenal. Yes, he did. You know, and there was stories at the time saying that Ancelotti was going to Arsenal and Arteta was yeah, going to Evan. Yeah. Um, so basically, Arsenal got the one we didn't want. Well, if you, I mean, you, you could look at it that way, you could look at it like that. But he's been—I mean, I don't Do you think there would be people out there thinking this is, you know, okay, it's all well and good saying that. Mm -hmm. Now we'll never know whether it's true or not. Without doing clangs, we know that it is true, though, because yeah. you had a conversation with—I did with a former chairman who uh, in Nando's, mm -hmm. not with the he, former. He wasn't in Nando's, no, not with the former chairman, not with um, Bill. Uh, but you were with me. I was with you and so, so heard you the conversation. Heard, you heard one side of the conversation, mm -hmm. and it, would it be fair to deduce that what you heard was Bill was working on getting Arteta as well, our, next ma our next manager? I remember his <laughs> quote was, "Oh, as when I repeated it." Afterwards. I remember the quote. I heard this because he was talking very animated to you. He was. So he I was. heard this. Oh, you my, heard it? it yeah. you, well, you oh, were sat like this. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm not. And I heard him and saying, he's, uh, he's not a boy anymore, he's a man. That's right. Which he was, because he was like 38, Bill. But he did say, he's serious, and he's the one. He's the mm. one I want. That's I'm, who I'm he wanted. Hard. Yeah, yeah. And then a couple of days later, it was Ancelotti. That's right, because um, it wasn't Everton who made the decision. It was the largest shareholder. The largest shareholder wanted Carlo Ancelotti. And listen... At the time, if you'd have gone John Carlo Ancelotti, Champions League winning manager, or unbelievable, Mikel or Arteta. someone who looks very highly rated, could be a, a great pal. Left, but <laughs> is Pep's number two? Yeah, yeah. Which one are you going for? I understand why the manager wants. Uh, sorry, by far up he wants a Carlo Ancelotti, but it all it did to me was just reaffirm that Everton sport and direct the role was never used in the way that you no. would expect it to be he, used. He did. He did. Brands didn't want to sack Marco Silva. That's then. right. Um, Marcel did the hard yards, but never got the final say. Mm. Mm. Up to the point where, of course, and I don't, have we talked? Have we done the Benitez story on here? About I don't know about so. Marcel going to Monaco to um, basically oh, to beat out. with yeah. the largest shareholder and and basically. Show him all the research work he'd done, mm, and then for, for younger make, coaches, make the recommendation of which coach we should go after, if mm. you will. And and he kept waiting in a hotel mm. for a couple of nights. Mm. Then he gets the call to go out to the big yacht mm. where uh, one of Mashiri's Farhad's mates had a big yacht, right? Mm. And uh, and the mate welcomes him onto the boat, right? And says, "You must be very excited with your new manager." Mm. Marcel's got this big folder under his arm, thinking, "What do you mean?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, you know, oh, Mister Benitez has been uh, been with us for a couple of days. Mm. So, 
he did it more than once. Mm. He, you know, he sacked managers and, well, Farhad appointed Allardyce. Against the wishes. Against the wishes of the chair. Um, he appointed Benitez against the wishes of the chair. I'm sure he and had the a, director of football. And the, of course, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah, but the chairman of the board, everyone below him is dismissed, aren't they, if you're ignoring the chair mm. sort of thing. Um, you know, and um, turned out to be the wrong decisions in the end of the day. Well, let me ask and, you. And perhaps the guy who got most hardly do, hard done by amongst the managers we've had, mm. I don't know which one's your favourite. Mine, I would probably say Silva got... You know, he was the missed opportunity, if you will. Mm. Uh, and that was the, the one that the director of football picked and really wanted to keep. Yeah. And it's not too much of a stretch, is it, to think, well, I'll let you pick one, but as soon as he looks like he's having a wobble, I'll sack him and pick who I want. Mm. So it's just history of Everton, you know, just by going through the managers. I think as well, yeah. listen, let's have it right. Would Arteta have done a good job at Everton? Quite possibly very good coach. It would have been very different to the job he's done at Arsenal. He's able to go in there. He's able to have money. Mm. Just, you know, they've spent something like 600 million under him in, in sure, four years. Sure. And, and maybe it's a bit more now. And they're excellent, aren't they? Big, mm. the well-run, huge ground and all that. And he's doing a brilliant job. So fair play to him. He, Steve Kelly says he probably goes to bed every night thinking, thank God Carlo got the Everton job and not me. Um, he might have been and gone by now with it. No, well, that's what reputation. I mean. But he might have been and gone failing because we couldn't give him what yeah, he needed. Yeah, so it, it, listen, it's it's interesting. I the, the interesting thing for me, and listen, we knew as we knew at the time, as we just said, we knew that Everton wanted them at the time, and and they went in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I just think it's it's all it does to me is just reaffirm that if if we've got a sporting director, but he's one who's not allowed to choose mm -hmm. the manager. Then are, the point? are we doing it in the correct manner? Mm. It's 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 one, but because Marcel Brands wanted that, didn't he? And mm. I, I imagine. I mean, I could have criticised Marcel in the past for not being strong enough. I, if that was going on, if you employ me to make decisions, then you don't let me make decisions. Mm. I'm gonna ask why I'm still here. Yeah, so now, that... someone might go, well, you know, big that million and a half quid you're earning every year. You might go, okay, and the yeah. Rest, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, but I, I would like to. His, his reputation was that good. It is yeah. that he could have just walked out for anything. Someone just needs. Maybe we should ask him. Someone should um, interview Marcel and say, okay, I will be. So, by our observation, you weren't allowed to do the job. Mm -hmm. Why did you sign a new contract then? Because mm -hmm. he must have got. Classic he must have got insurance, yeah, yeah. Saying, right, okay, you're right, we're going to do it right from here on in. As soon as there was a wobble, the owner knee jerks into the Wasn't it something like six weeks after he signed his contract, the, the owner went above him and appointed beneath us? That's what I mean. Just and, then, and let's be honest, let's have it right. He, he only stayed till Christmas and then went anyway. Yeah. Because so it, it, yeah. it is what it is. And but. this wonderful fan base amazingly mm -hmm. gave him support until it all went pear shaped mm. but during that honeymoon period he wiped out half the organisation mm. well he wiped out brands that's what I mean yeah. brands are that's what I mean he wiped out half the organisation mm. on the medical side this that and the other got rid of a direct football because mm. I ain't going to work with him type mm. of thing and that all clearly went wrong when he was the one on the boat for two days and not not Marcel, not Marcel so. yeah. mad mad very interesting very interesting I wonder how it would have all played out write a book Marcel you can never look back and I'll go and write it for you there you go <laughs> Um Obviously, John, yesterday it was confirmed that uh, Leicester City had been charged by the Premier League mm, for a PSR sure. points deduction. It's something that's been bouncing around for the last week or so. Mm. I'll do the clang. It's something I did say back in November that they were under investigation and would be done uh, when mm. journalists were writing stories that they were about to sue Everton and Leicester fans were calling us cheats. Um, but it is out there and they become the latest club to... That's mm. going to have an asterisk by their name. Yeah, yeah. It's all getting a little bit out of hand this now, isn't it? Yeah. We've got Everton and Forest with asterisks. Leicester becoming joining the asterisk club. Mm. Chelsea are under investigation and, sh and will probably be joining the asterisk club. We may have Man, well, Man City should definitely be joining the asterisk club if the asterisk club, if everybody else is. Villa and Newcastle. I've got to sell players, otherwise they'll be in the Asterix Club. Wolves, I've got to sell a player by the 30th of June, or they'll be in the Asterix Club. There's eight, but almost a half the Premier League clubs. Mm -hmm. There's others watching over the shoulder, apparently, as well, mm -hmm. who are close to the line. 
it's all becoming a bit ridiculous. And apparently, James Farrelly said, uh, apparently, James didn't say this. James said, apparently, someone on the radio today, an expert, if you like, saying 80% of Premier League teams are going to fail PSR next season unless they move players on. But the problem is only a few clubs have money to buy. That's 16. Mm, that's crazy, isn't it? It also sounds wrong. But mm. it's crazy, isn't it? Because mm. if that was the case, then 16 clubs would have an Aztec at the name. Um, Premier League need to increase the size of their judicial panel. And that will change. Oh, that's what they should do. Change the rules. <laughs> just say this was just a dream. You wake up in the shower and it never happened. Mm. Right. Yeah, go full Dallas with Bobby yeah. Ewing. There's a yeah. reference for the kids there. Yeah. Two two kids over here. I haven't got a clue what we're talking no, about. No, I got a hell of a lot out there. He'll be like, <laughs> look it up on Google. Yeah, or what whatever. are you talking about? Yeah. Bobby Ewing yeah. isn't dead after it, all. It was all just a dream. It was all just a dream. Yeah, yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, it is mad. It is mad. Uh, and then further to that, obviously, there's a story today about uh, the, the decision on Triple Seven. Sophie says Premier League need a long guard look at how long they're taking. Oh, sorry. How long they're taking to make a decision on Triple Seven. I think they've already made the decision, Sophie. Yeah. I think it, it's just when the announcement confirming that they've been given it comes out. That's how it seems if you read between the lines. Um, but you're right, this has took far too long. They should have... Again, I can't help thinking, I've said this on other stuff, that they're just they're just delaying the announcing it until Everton's PSR stuff are being, in, um, being heard because we know that when Todd Bowley took, in, took over to Chelsea and then sent the email saying, oh, something looks afoot here, Premier League, but it's got nothing to do with us. They were given enough time to get the feet under the table and, mm. and get things organised, I guess, to demonstrate that they're trying to do things appropriately, whereas the past regime didn't and the Premier League were okay with that. And I think that, and I heard this from nothing where you would say this has come from them, so it's, for, it's guaranteed, but I heard that there was a fear in the Premier League that if they approved Triple Seven, Triple Seven would go along the same lines as, well, hang on. This was a previous regime where the owners now we need time to be able to get things mm. have you know get across everything and have a look why this was the case and you shouldn't be punishing us as new owners and that kind of i don't know whether that's real or it isn't real mm. but when you look at it fully cynical and i'm cynical now because of everything that's gone on that kind of makes sense to go of course they're doing that. Of course they're just kicking it down the road. To, a, to impact us a little bit more. Because don't forget, if you wanted to go full Tim Foyle hat on and all that, there seems to be a sea change once Everton came out and had a go at six clubs in the Premier League for trying it's to true. break away. True. But if you're the Premier League and you think, oh, I don't want another club saying who are changing ownership, saying, oh, this Using the same excuse of your This life. thing's got nothing to do with us and it's on you to give the answer or to give the announcement, then maybe you would go. We, we, You know, everything's in hand, lads, you know. You're getting your approval, but we need to get these things out the way first. Yeah. And maybe that's more closer to the truth. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. But it seems that they would like Everton's cases to be heard before they're mm. ready to, to allow... Triple seven two and or, or yeah. themselves. I, mean, the it, I don't know whether that's real or no. So. I, it's Sherlock stuff, isn't it? Mm. Which is you know you look at what when when things you're not quite sure how, why is that happening. Mm. You, you think of all the reasons why it's not the reason. Yeah. what's left? Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, Ned, I've just sent you a link to an M Tag article that I did last August because it was about Chelsea. Oh, okay. Yeah. That shows you how long it's been hanging around. Because when I wrote the article about Chelsea, and there's a punchline to this, it was all about what you've just said, them finding stuff once they got into the into the football yeah, club. Yeah. They decided that a couple of directors couldn't stay because they were going to keep two, two people as carryovers mm. because this naughtiness was going on. Right. And straight away, Chelsea Hands struck up. their hand yeah. up, told the FA, told UEFA, uh, uh, and told the Premier Paid League. The fine. <clears throat> and then UEFA fined them, mm. yeah? And the others are still investigating. But you can read the article, people, if it, if it goes in the link. But Comments. yeah, good, good. Um, but the thing is, because you, you keep talking about money, mm. 
you know, like one or two points for Nottingham Forest for sending emails or whatever, yeah. um, could be worth a hundred million quid, right? When they did the, the acquisition, Chelsea, and they found out this stuff, which is currently being investigated, mm -hmm. they set aside, uh, and that's why the article, when people look, is called unforeseen liabilities, yeah. 100 million pounds in case the result of what they'd found turns into fines and the like. Wow. So they've got a provision there of 100 million pounds and that, you know, the naughtiness in my article is Premier League, when you finally finish your investigations and you choose maybe to find them, mm -hmm. like like um, UEFA did, remember they set aside £100 million pounds for this. Now, but then the they... Premier League say we won't find wealthy owners because what difference does it make yeah. to them? Yeah, like £100 million doesn't matter. That's you mad, isn't it? You know, it's all that's up. what they said in, that's what uh, David Phillips said, which, well, I'm going to re just keep referring to as the hanging judge. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and that's not derogatory to him. It's just that the prosecutor found a judge that gave out the size of punishment to Everton the first time around it was right at the very, very highest of the high end of what a tariff could be. Mm. Yeah. Um, and they picked, they, the regulator, picked him for a reason, obviously. Mm. They wanted a shock result and they got one. Yeah. But it's just unraveled ever since, hasn't it? Mm. Because subsequent judges have all diluted those numbers down to the point where Forest get four for a much bigger breach. Not anti Forest again, we keep saying that. But yeah, yeah, no, just when you look at it, it's just. But like... Leicester City, you know, their fans, you know, the same fans are used to seeing Champions of England, you'll never sing that mm -hmm. to Everton fans, which is quite amusing. Um, but they're going to come up, aren't they, to a minus point deduction, presumably. Mm -hmm. At least they'll start the season knowing. Yeah, at least they'll got know, yeah. three, six, whatever. Which again is. To recover. Is something I've said. If you really are obsessed with points deductions, as you think that's appropriate, I, I personally don't, then it goes on to the next season. Well, if, if the Premier League, need, League do need a way out of this hole, mm. and on the basis that they think it, <laughs> they've set up a rule, haven't they, which says that in the year that, in the season that you are reported, that's when um, the deduction or the punishment should apply. Clearly they can't do that's that with Leicester, can they? But why not just say to Everton Forest, okay, we're setting all these sanctions to one side. Mm. Well, what you've already got, you've already got, mm. right? So Everton, you've already got six. Mm. Forest, you've already got four. You're going to start next season with minus six. You're going to start with minus four. And when Leicester come up, mm. whatever they've done naughty will be comparable with you guys. Mm. No one would be happy, but it's a better place than where they're at right now. Well, at least you know, it's not great. It's not ideal because, again, I keep reiterating that every day points, points are the wrong answer. Are not appropriate. I'm talking about they need a bridge between accepting points that are not the right answer, see, the, but they've already done it twice this thing, or three see, times if you count. Do you know where the here. problem is with this? We're going to put them points deductions in the same season. Yeah. The reporting year is not the same season. No, it's not. That's it's true. in the year before. That's true. So it makes no sense to go. Totally true. It's oh, when you're charged. Yeah. Your thingy, you're naughty, so you're getting it now. What? Sorry, yeah, just reiterate, because just treat me as if I'm a child. When's this from? How oh, from 2021? 2024, lads. You yeah. need it now. You know, it I should be... I don't know be... what the timing of the Leicester one was for, do you? To 2022, wasn't it? For no, when they were relegated No, I don't... Year. No, 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 I mean the timing oh. of yesterday's announcement. Why? Why you come out? Yeah, yeah. wait for them to be promoted first. Mm -hmm. Well, they're getting one in the championship. The EFL have said, and they stay, they get one, they go, they get one. So yeah. they get one no matter Maybe what. Maybe that's just the EFL and, and, and the EPL being joined up. They're just yeah. going, yeah, we're doing it. But for me, again, I keep saying it, there's no one can prove sport and advantage. Nobody. Unless you sign, you're told you can't spend one pence and you're going to buy a £100 million strike and he comes and gets 50 goals, then you go. Well, you wouldn't have been able to have him with that. Because that's your hundred million that you mm. just spent on that play. Like people could say Forest have gone for sport and advantage because all of their expenses are on players and the players are there. But they're, they're Forest have been said no sporting advantage whatsoever. Yeah, so there you go, forty six players, and, and again, not big and far back and Forest out. I'm just saying. But again, yeah, you, you're guilty. Okay, got to take it. There's a line there. You went past right, it. So yeah. you're guilty. So you have to take it. So you get if you're obsessed with points deductions, you're getting points deductions from next season. You start bang whatever. There might be an issue if you're relegated. 
Well, you get them the next time you're in that but division. But the next time in the Premier League, you carry over minus three or yeah, minus yeah. six or minus nine, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. It couldn't be minus nine, but you know what I mean, minus six. If you fail it again, the following season, you get minus six, you start the mm. season with again. Mm. You know where you are. You can't, to me, where it all falls down is when you go in and start changing results, which is essentially what happens mid-season. You've won 31. Forrest have won 25 points. Now they've had four taken off them. Yeah. You know, it's a, it, and that's where it falls down. And but I changing the rules, Joe. That's the killer. Changing the rules during the season, and then change, and then accepting your rules are wrong and gonna, changing them gonna when change you them know again. that they've not got a life. Yeah, mm, that's what's mad. But again, just to go back, I would still transfer bans still seem more appropriate to me because they're doing they're doing what PSR is supposed to be, which is making sure you don't spend any more money. It's you, one, oh, oh, you're in a bit of a hole. And we're going to make sure for 12 months yeah, you yeah. don't add to that. So in 12 months' time, theoretically, you should be better. Yeah. Shouldn't you? Because you haven't been able to spend yeah. money. We I, take one of the things, mm. and the biggest one, mm. that you spend money on. Mm. And, and therefore, we're going to stop you doing that for a year. Mm. And then we'll review your numbers. It's yeah. a bit like doing the old thingy with your bank or going to Citizens Advice. And they say, right, turn the tap off. You know, yeah. let's consolidate what, your debts yeah, almost effectively yeah. let's find out what your living expenses are mm. without all the oh you, know, you or what you, you do know. john is you change the rules and you say psr is in place to stop sporting advantage then there is that yeah then there's be an careful, it might get clipped to be different this yeah <laughs> that's what they could do and yes. say these are why psr is in place now it is to stop sporting advantage if that's what you're going to do then put them in your rules then mm. but you can't go PSR is in place for financial stability for your football club and then say, come we're applying with, it to sport and a banter. Put, come up with a mechanism that actually causes... Because are uh, Newcastle be United this. on the verge of going bust? No, of course no, not. Of course not. But they can't spend money if they sell a player. Who knows? Who knows? I don't think so, but who knows? Yeah. But I know Newcastle aren't. That's right. And I know that Villa aren't. And yet Villa have got to sell a player as well to to, to not breach this thing, and and that's where that's where Villa they're... are probably living beyond their means as well, but but not going out of business, living beyond your I means. Think a very wealthy owner, like oh yeah, no, if you he's take the worth owner, crazy money. Yeah, if you take the owners, always going to bail you out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah, yeah. We're looking at football clubs. Mm, you know, yeah, Liverpool yeah. had three hundred million. None in, of them should go out. Liverpool three hundred million in debt to FSG in, yeah, yeah. in loans yeah, yeah. that he's never going to take probably, but. They're there, Brighton are in debt to Tony Bloom. That's right, yeah. He rents back his Same system. Brentford. And they, Brentford have got different clubs. That's why wants investors to sell, or sell out. Well, different clubs Brentford, have got yeah. different things. It doesn't mean do. Tony Tony Bloom's a Brighton fan as if he's ever going to put that club in. No, day. Of right. course he's not. Come on, Liverpool and FSG aren't going to call in that money. Or if they do, it'll be dividends, whatever it is. If you follow that logic, ultimately, mm? there's 20 unique positions in the Premier League mm. all of which should be mitigation for any breach of the rules because you're in a unique situation yeah. Well, yeah exactly <laughs> so I just think I, I just think you know, I'd have changed the rules to say PSR is in place to stop Sporting Advantage so that way they're trying to stop Newcastle and, yeah, yeah. and City doing whatever there's other clubs of course should but, be to but, stop but uh, the hinder in Newcastle and Villa should be to stop Sporting Disadvantage yeah or you say you keep the rule as it is which is there to protect the football club financially and that way, then don't take points off them that they've won where it's meta placings. Mm. If you know when on day one, well, we're minus six, we've got to win three games mm. to be positive here. That's the way you, that's that's football. The, the thing is, right. I mean, it, Everton, lost the, Everton lost the first three games last season, so we'd have been on naught anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I was speaking to my missus this morning talking about, you know, the FA men in blazers, right? Sort of the old mm. Codgers who mm. football association, mm. right? Not men in blazers, the show, which no, is no, Rod Jett, no, which no. is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which it is, by the mm. way. Roger, one yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah. Um, and you know, I said no, it is because the mechanism with which you get on the FA Council and stuff like mm. that obviously plays two people who've got time and they're older and so on and so forth. Yeah. Right, but but the reality is, with what all the things you've just said, mm. it's not twenty first century stuff, is it? Right, mm. you know, saying that you're put, putting rules in place to stop clubs going out of business, yeah, which you then punish them for breaching after the event. Yeah, they're gonna get. If, if this was a real issue, mm -hmm. a club would go out of business before they breached the rules, wouldn't they? Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Of course, because cause... They're, they're not viable. Well, if I ran a business and I was losing you know, 104. 000. 35 million a year at, every year, I don't think I'm going to get to year two. If That's I, right. Yeah. If we get to the end of the year and you go, 
You've lost 30 million. So, so I'm not getting to year two, am I? So, you know, so real science and mm-hmm. uh, sorry, real time, you know, monitoring of stuff. But you listen to football pundits, no disrespect to them because they're not business people, really. I mean, Gary Neville is, I suppose, and he's probably learned a lot in recent times about mm-hmm. running football clubs and businesses and stuff. Um, but it's not rocket science. You know, I've talked to you when we do BWB about reviewing finances every single month, you mm-hmm. know, with, with your team and then with your boss every quarter and with the group chief exec every year and planning budgets, challenger sessions, you know, saying what you're going to do and then monitoring performance against it, having KPI, this, that, and the other. They're all apple pie for every business of yeah. any substance in the world. But the indications are, if Premier League clubs do it, they don't act upon what it tells them. Mm. You know, you'd like to think a Grant Ingalls, the ex-finance director at Everton, was saying every month for month upon month upon month, if we keep doing this, lads, we're going to breach that rule. Yeah, yeah. Right? And yet his professional integrity allowed him to stay there, not getting listened to. For a significant amount of time, Marcel Brands, his integrity was less valuable than the pay packet because he stayed there. And, you know... You, you get promises, and as soon as they they don't satisfy them, you walk out the door. Maybe that's what Marcel did in the end, right? But there's so much money washing around in football, it's really hard for people to even be professionally objective because your family is saying, but Baz, you know, you go and get a job in XYZ company, you're going to earn 100 grand a year, this lot are paying you a million. Put up with it for a bit longer. Mm, yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've got to have external observation of those KPIs, you know, and, and, and that's where it can be automatic data feeds and then a little, you know, the Premier League or the regulator it will probably mm, be, like, has a it. dashboard and they go, whoops, oops, mm. Evan have just gone orange. I don't have a <laughs> word with them. Yeah. What's going on? Mm. If we don't like the answers, we can immediately stop them doing things. Mm. Lest we forget the Premier League could have stopped Nottingham Forest registering players. Yeah, you're spending too much money. You're about to stop be stop Everton. Yeah, you're, no, I mean objectively stop it. Refuse oh, no. to register. Well, I'm saying they stopped Everton. Yeah, and, and you, told Everton a couple of deals. Well, there you more go. than two deals couldn't go if through. If you bring this through, through, we won't register mm. them. You can have to play. That's easy. Yeah, you can be paying him wages, but you'll never be able to play him. That's what La Liga do, don't they? La yeah. Liga just yeah. well, the La Liga president said. Everton's situation never would have happened. And Forest possible. would never have happened in the league. Not possible. Yeah, because they'd have just gone. Yeah. Nope, sorry, don't. F- you can register them all. You you can have them all you want, just but you can't, can't register them. them. Just can't. I've got to wait a year before you can have him. Yeah. So you've sold someone else. It is. It's a mad one. Um, Gary Walters Hardy, John B says. Hi, uh, John B, but not you. Hey, John B says uh, Everton's four summer transfer targets leaked: Barkley, Moyes, Umbro, and Chang. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the Chang revolution, he yeah. says. Um, Mel says, even if Arteta came in, we would have been in the same boat. No money in being forced to sell our best players while reducing the wage bill and losing points via PSR. He may have been great with a bit of money and getting youngsters with potential, giving us an identity on how we play. That would have been fitting. But we have I've played in survival mode for the last few seasons and it shows on the pitch. I always thought Brands was treated a bit unfairly. He picked us up a few good players with potential. You wonder with Brands whether... If they'd have just let him get on with it in true fashion, whether he'd have, whether we'd have been in a better place or not, I, I think yes, we would. Do you know what right? I mean? But but I think you know, you can have technical competence. We call him technically good, mm. having good contacts, mm. this, that, and the other. He clearly knew the European market. He knew sweet FA about the English one. Yeah, he hasn't he'd been shopping there, had he, mm. so to speak. I mean, I don't know where they sell bread in Harrods because I just don't go there. Don't go right? there. Yeah. Uh, struggle enough with Sainsbury's, never mm-hmm. mind. Mm-hmm. But um, go on the Arteta one. Mm-hmm. I think a man of his personality, and let's be blunt, his arrogance, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have put up with what some of the managers we've had put up with. Mm-hmm. Right? He'd have walked into it with his eyes open because he would have seen some of the mess that had gone on previously. Um, and a bit like he, he, he did at Arsenal. You know, he would confront the constraints. Mm-hmm. You know, if there was an Obama Yang moment, he'd have done it. He'd have got rid of people. Uh, we're, we're, so we might have been better. But off. what we've seen is managers who are grateful for the job because they're unemployed, managers who want to be read a dare and get paid lots of money for six months' work, yeah. young managers who found, you know, the, the stress just that little bit just too, too heavy. Much, yeah. 
and who could never get the cuddle that they needed because of all yeah. the other noise that was going on. And a director of football who who probably enjoyed the lifestyle that a couple of million pounds a year brings. So he's not harmless. Mm. Just sitting there going, well, no one will let me do my job mm. is not good enough, is it? Right? And, um, you know, it's a bit like, you know, the, the story about Everton, or certainly Mr. Mashiri and Mr. Kenwright, had their concerns about one of our past managers before he'd even signed the contract, but they still let him sign it. Mm. And then they sacked him a couple of years later. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you've got to be really decisive in your decision-making in any business. And I don't think that's a common trait in football clubs. I mean, that doesn't mean they can't be trigger happy. I just mean they don't think things through in the right way. Mm. Um, and that's what we've said on the channel for Yonks. Um, new owners, they need to come in be decisive around their decision making, which can only be because you've got a plan and effective in communicating and, and the fan base will get behind you if you do that. Mm. Yeah. I agree, John. Totally agree. Um, Steve Kelly says, all right, lads, hope you both well. The uh, Steve Kelly. Ah, Steve Kelly. Yeah. yeah. So you lads have just listed the number of huge mistakes that the owner has made. We're currently in the middle of a takeover, which the owner has signed off on. Does that worry you and make you think something isn't right? The PL, uh, have the PL been great? No, but surely questions need answering by the owner on the whole of this farce. What's think, the question? I think he's saying Mishiri needs to answer questions regarding this takeover. What question does Steve want to answer? I think he thinks... Well, Steve can tell us. He, he? he seems to be leaning that it's an issue with Triple Seven rather than the Premier League. Okay. Well, like, we're all in, entitled to opinions, aren't we? Mm. Um, Mishiri didn't. Um, I thought I did an article last week, didn't I? Again, it's on. It's on M Tag. Mm. It doesn't matter. Um, Mishiri said when he announced it last year mm. that he thinks these are the right guys, mm. and then they've gone into the Premier League process, and we've had all of us have had six, seven months of call it torture, if you like, because mm. tomorrow never comes, yeah. right? Um, and my opinion that's squarely on the premier league end mm. of yeah damn with you, i'm yeah. telling you if i was the regulator a decision would have been made a long time ago mm. you know and and i wouldn't be covering my ass and kicking the can down the road every five minutes because i'm scared of getting it wrong mm. i mean we i've used the analogy haven't i so many times about it's like a var decision right and they had a six minute var decision for handball didn't they in the west ham game yeah. That's just crazy. And the excuse given, and I've not seen the Michael Owen Howard Webb thing. I don't mm. know if they talked about it, but in the media, you know, print media was they're so frightened of getting it wrong. They're looking at stuff for too long and too closely, mm. and the, they see it within thirty seconds. It's handball, and they spend another five minutes quadruple checking whether it really is or not. And if that's what the Premier League are doing, that's just because you're not fit for purpose as a regulator. Mm. We all know that with a real independent regulator. Well, it was you. You can't be independent because you're Evertonian, but you know what I mean. Um, this decision would have been made yonks ago. And yeah. if the answer was, guys, I've asked you some questions, you haven't answered them, go away. Mm. You can come back again some other time mm. whenever you think you can answer the questions, but we're, we're, you're not clogging up our process, mm. you know? Go away. Um, so I always, if I got a choice, I mean, clearly it takes two to tango and all that stuff, but if you had to say there's one of these entities whose mm. fault it is, and the, the choices are Everton, mm. not to do with them, Triple Seven trying to buy a shareholding, Premier League trying to decide whether they're a fit and proper owner or not. Mm. If only one of them can be to blame, which one is it? It's not Everton. It's not Triple Seven. It has to be the Premier League because they're the ones with the final say. So mm. it is what it is. And as we keep saying over and over again, let's just have a goddamn decision and move on. Mm. Whatever I, I, it is. Abigail says, my dad runs a successful business. If he lost significantly uh, less than that in a year, it'd be in trouble. Yeah. Football clubs being able to lose 105 million over three years is ridiculous. It is, it is. It is, isn't it? Because you just assume it's no put you in trouble. Well, well, like one puts you in trouble, doesn't it? You know, I know football clubs, money's crazy and all that, but it, and they all operate at losses, but it lots is. Lots and lots of companies operate yeah. at a loss. I mean, the richest man on the planet right mm. it's because he's a massive shareholder in a massive business which spend a long time loss making no it did it did but but what is what's mad about some of that is a lot of businesses aren't afforded that are they they're not afforded that go yeah. through this tough year and next year will be better 
a lot of them are cold because always, they, yeah, they can't find the money. But it's cash flow on. rather yeah. than P&L. Lots of businesses mm. that are profitable go out of business yeah. because of cash flow. That's Usually bad, it's cash it? flow that gets you. And ultimately, the first person to batter your door down, say Majesty's Revenues and Taxes people, yeah, mm. because they want their money first. Um, and, and that's like an indicator that Everton are not particularly close to going out of business because we'd have heard some noise about HMRC being upset by now, I would have thought. So. Of course, yeah. Uh, Patrick says, G'day from Australia, guys. G'day, sport. G'day, Patrick. Uh, do you think what's happened with Forrest and Leicester's PSR charge will have any influence on Everton's second charge? No. Okay. Short and sweet. And clearly, the we'll call it, you know, Forest IC1 mm. <laughs> sort of thing. That has some impact because the judgment is out there and we've been talking about it. Mm. The Leicester one won't because it'll be after the event. Yeah. Um, if Forest appeal, mm. it almost makes it systemic that Everton would appeal because we want to go to the court last. Yeah. So, so to speak, um, which is why it's important um, for the Premier League that Forest don't appeal. Mm. puts pressure on Everton then are you going to have a frivolous appeal and be held accountable for no one knowing who's promoted and relegated and all that sort of stuff um, Premier League published their timetable but they're trying to do things faster than that timetable mm. so they're very conscious of the consequences I guess of the final Sunday happening and no one knowing for a period <laughs> after that it's crazy. and if I'm Everton and I've got last call on it then I want to get advantage out of it I won't appeal if yeah. <laughs> you know so to yeah. speak but if we haven't had those conversations already, it doesn't matter because what happens next Monday to Wednesday is going to determine whether you appeal or not. Yeah, true. Uh, Steve said, uh, oh, Steve responded to the, the machinery thing. The point was more on about the amounts of mistakes he's made. Oh, like the oh sorry, I get it now. Oh, he's and made so therefore, and now yeah. he said triple seven. Oh, got uh, it, uh, got it. Right, so yeah. He, he's made bad decisions yeah, in the past. It, what, why do we think this one might be a, a, the right one? So uh, I think that's what... I think. Shorthand is we don't, and, and mm. we can't necessarily trust him. Mm. Um, I think there's a couple of safety nets there. Most of the bad decisions he made was around managers, mm. which were impulsive. Mm. You know, Bill jumping in his car and heading across town to stop him appointing Allardyce, and when he gets there, he said, I've done it, you know. <laughs> that's things happening in minutes and hours, mm. yeah. And if nothing else, he's had six or seven months to reflect on whether triple seven are the right people or not. Mm. And so despite all the noise, maybe he's just insulated from it. He clearly hasn't, he hasn't yet changed his mind, has he? No. But um, maybe, and the other safe net is the Premier League are overseeing it. Yeah. So yeah. an independent who's not emotionally bound up or, or vested interest, mm. Premier League don't care that this is the best deal for Farad Mishiri, do they? They just want to know whether it's the best deal for Everton Football Club and and them because the and the Premier League. Well, they've had more. This has had more scrutiny than Absolutely, any yeah. other takeover ever in the history yeah, of the Premier mad, League. So, well, they're just trying to tighten it, aren't they, for the regulator to affect head off a regulator, which is not going to happen, but that's what they're trying to do. Mm. They, they could lose some of the gains that they had, um, you know, influence in the shape of the bill mm. because of amendments come because of their current poor performance in mm. playing at regulator. Then that's just the, the, the last nail in uh, some of the, the executive's coffin. I think, I think so. so. Uh, Steve said, he did say to me last night, if you look at brands of signings, he'd done all right, considering some, made money some of the fools them. around them. Yeah. Said, we made money on them, some of them as well, mm. without them very much playing, you know, like Moise Keane, for example. You yeah. Know, you know, we, we did good financial business there, didn't we? Mm. Though we sadly never really saw the player. Uh, Steve says, Steve P says, uh, Baz, you know, find it suspicious that all these clubs that are now apparently going to fail, yet yeah, not one club failed since it started, almost like they were letting people get away with it. They most definitely were. I did say. Including us. At the time. I did find it a bit suspicious that nobody had come close to this, despite all the crazy oh, they spending. Had. They had, hadn't they? Because the the first stage was this special measures thing, mm. which Everton were on. Mm. And, and and I've said it before, so I'm going to say it again. Everton were shocked, weren't they, mm. when they got charged because they thought, we're doing everything the Premier mm. League They were on special measures, yeah. yeah. And then they go into courtroom and find out they want 12 points off mm. us. Mm. Well, that's a bit... Uh, let's do local colloquialism. You could accuse in the, for Everton the first mm. time that the Premier League were a bit two-faced. Yeah. Saying one thing outside the courtroom and it's thing inside it, right? Even dra dragging up things that finance people had allegedly said or not said and there was no, all that sort of stuff. And that's what was really poignant for me yesterday because Forrest said the same thing. Mm. They 
Boris's anger seems to be, we've done everything they've asked, and then they ask for the maximum points deduction. Mm. Yeah. So, but yeah, the guy was right. I mean, how we don't know how many have been in special measures, how many have been on the naughty step, do we? No. We not. can guess, you know, mm. it's like wolves bragging about how good they are. You know, well, we know that they were talking to the Premier League for months of yeah. to how to really avoid it. When so. Forrest got done, it wasn't Forrest and mm. <laughs> and Everton, of course, but it wasn't yeah, yeah. and Wolves. Most people thought it was going to be We've all known Leicester being on the, in, in dire And States don't forget, they were helped out by Saudi clubs oh, gosh, coming yeah. and buying players for, for crazy extortionate money. money. Yeah. Uh, Everton Viking says, I guess I don't see the real purpose of announcing it they, if they've been accepted or not at a later date, if a decision has already been made. If they've been approved or denied, it won't make a difference when it's announced because it's already done. If they've been approved, it should be announced already. The same if it's been declined. But I think if it'd been declined, it would have been announced. That's Bad the, news the irony. Faster. Bad news for them, I mean, yeah. Um, Brian says, Arteta did an excellent job clearing out the squad. Uh, he inherited and withstanding protests of the supporters. Yeah, they wanted, wanted him out for a bit. He proceeded to mould the squad into what it is today. But surviving at Everton is another story. Yeah, yeah. But I think it was a bit harsh whoever said before that he just inherited a load of really good youngsters and glued them together he didn't he had some hard decisions to make mm -hmm. didn't he oh he, he made some big decisions yeah. Spruce said uh, Stefan Borson is I won't use the word but he, he doesn't he's not as big as fan let's say that um, Bill says we've been run like a clown show it's just another example you need full alignment at a club uh, Glenn says, John, the business, fantastic old Blaine. What do NASA scientists say when discussing something is easy? Because they can't say it's not rocket science. <laughs> mm. Good one. Like uh, it. Martin is just questioning your take on Silver. Says, apparently Silver was our most hard done to manager because he took us over and was handed Richarlison, Mina, Dean, Zuma, Gomez, Bernard. Brands didn't under... He didn't understand... That, that, the demands of the Premier League he never bought real pace uh, he managed to get us in the relegation zone after 18 months mm -hmm. Allardyce took us steadily up the league in the few months he was here but was sacked because he doesn't play nice footy a bit like a plumber who fixes your leaks mm -hmm. ASAP but you prefer to employ one that allows the leaks to continue mm -hmm. the reality with Silva was the director of football wanted him to stay he was one win Dunk done the Chelsea game done a brilliant job and I'm not this is nothing against Dunk. Duncan was done really well in his first one didn't he played three Premier League games mm. Chelsea United and Arsenal didn't lose any of them mm. when we won in the first game we went up to 14th mm. didn't we we moved away from it so if Marco very much like when Allardyce came in and won a game by the time he took his first game Everton were already away from danger. Panic was over. Well, we beat West Ham 4-0 and went out away from trouble. Then we beat Huddersfield on the Saturday when he'd been in the job for a day. Mm. And we were ninth or, or we yeah, were mid-table. Yeah, we would have beat West Ham without Sam being the manager, would we? Well, there you go. Well, even though it was under. <laughs> um, Marco had a solid first season. He finished the season very strongly. I've said this before, his biggest error was... Appointing Ball and Morty, yeah. he was dreadful. Um, and at that history with the football club, it's never going to work. I'm not saying he was, I, I thought he should have been given longer, me too. But the results at the time, I mean, he, he hadn't, he didn't go 11 games without winning a game of football, put it that way, four months. Um, but he got sacked because his results went. He, he lost three games on the run, and that for Machiri at that time was unacceptable. You go to Google and look up his win percentage, and it, mm. you know it looks a no, lot better now, doesn't it? Than it so you just did look. Time, so yeah. I, I, I felt a bit sorry for him when he got sacked, but I did. I didn't sit there and go, "This is a disgrace," because it was like, "Well, we're not winning games, and the it's a, it's the a, demands yeah. of the job are that you win football matches." Mm. It's like now. Everton aren't in trouble because they've had six points taken off them. Everton are in trouble because they haven't won a game of football since mid-December. That's true. If Everton would have won three of these 11 we, and we, lost the other eight... It wouldn't matter. We'd, we'd be clear. We wouldn't even be that concerned about a set. We'd be going, we only have to win two and we're all right. So let's not tailor arguments one way or the other. Yeah, that's right. Marco, Sam, I've said before on record, in Machiri's reign, Sam Allardyce is probably the harshest done to manage it really in my opinion because even though we were dreadful 
playing dreadful football under us. We were never in danger. And if he would have stayed in charge for three more years, we'd have never been he in danger. Stability, yeah. It, we, we might not have loved the footy, but we wouldn't have been in trouble because mm. he, he knows how to keep you mid-table. Mm. There's no issue with that. Sam Allardyce was sacked because, and it wasn't just because of the football, it was because he started going against the fan base mm. and laughing and blaming everybody else when Everton lost. But when Everton won, it was him. Mm. So, And again, I've done this, this same argument with people who will go on about Sean Dice. Defence is amazing because of Dice, but the football play's got nothing to do with him. You can't differentiate. He's either doing a good job or he's doing a poor job. Allardyce done a decent job. Did I like watching the way we play football? No, but it was only when we were safe and he didn't try anything different. He but, missed a trick there. But even if he just stayed doing what he was doing, but wouldn't have gone against the fan base. Mm. That's where his problems began. Mm. And don't forget, Everton was in a... Whether you agree or you don't, Everton was in a different mind space at that time. 2018, the money had just come in. People want a top four. True. And okay, we never got there. But you're right, he's probably in Mashiri's reign. Sam Allardyce is probably the harshest done to manager if you're just looking at a results thing because... Yeah, I wasn't doing it that he took, No, no, I'm saying, but he took Everton to eighth. No, he did. End he the did. story. Ronald Koeman got Everton to 61 eights. points. Yeah, indeed. And the minutes the hit a brick wall the following season, he was sacked. You see, uh, the way I look at it, because I used to have the conversations um, often with Bill, mm. and, and, and I've, I frequently, multiple managers have said the same thing. You know, he, he'd tell me about Martinez, for example. He's always the last one out of the building. Mm, at night. God, yeah. He's there on his own till 11. I ring him up and tell him to go home. And I said, and he was the first one I said it about. I said, Bill, this football club's let managers fail. It watches them failing and doesn't help them. Mm. It, they become isolated, fearful, you know, figures. You know, we could we can all recall seeing Kuman with the legend as a player stood on a punt, uh, on a touchline on his own, and everyone in the building knowing he doesn't know what to do. Mm. It's when he gets sacked, not if he gets sacked. You try and flip over there, and he was one of the most arrogant managers we've ever he had, for crying out yeah. loud. Him and Allardyce would have a go at each other. I mean, you've got Benitez as well, you know? Mm. And they're divisive characters, yeah? And there you had Silva, a damn good coach, a legend, you know, on the coast at Estoril, you know, just outside Lisbon for what he did there. Mm. And a director of football who was committed to him, mm but an over-the-top decision made by a guy who's a million miles away from understanding how football works. But we had, hang on, and I like my home, you know it, but we had had that home game against Norwich, no, we got some of the league I and lost, it. and we, were, we weren't in great form. He was in the, in the lights, struggling, yeah. no one helped him. That's it. And That's the owner exactly didn't it, help yeah. as well. That's and, exactly and that's what I'm talking about. But Allardyce, for me, was the harshest done to. But I understand why he got rid of him as well, because he wanted a new era. And that summer, he brought in Marcel Brands, and he came in mm. with Marco Silva. And this was the, they'd done the press conference together, which, which, never, nice happened, start, which yeah. never happened again. That's true, yeah. By the way, the director of football never sat with the manager again. Side by side, he didn't. We were at Carlos. I was going to say, I was just to ask what I was Carlo doing. Carlos was on his own. You knew what I was doing. Yeah. He was in the room. And he wasn't he in the room, there, didn't yeah. he? He wasn't right, there, yeah. certainly wasn't, wouldn't have been there for Benitez because he no. didn't agree with the That's signing. Right, yeah. So it's all listen it's all the way it is uh, Kev Murphy past. says it afternoon gents Baz please tell Ned to talk to Amelia at least about his famous battering seagulls he hasn't done it yet though he hasn't got that he, he got can't get that either, has he? Okay, well, why can't we see you up on that screen there mm. on the monitor where Dylan says Allardyce blew massive money on Tosin and Walcott I think that was Walsh as well wasn't he listen I I I'm not saying I wanted... Ryzan right, and Keith Harris wasted money on Yeah, I'm not saying I wanted Sam Allardyce to continue, by the way. No. I'm saying um, that was... If you're looking and just going, oh, you know, who did what? Who was a little bit harsher treated to? You could say Allardyce because he got Everton to eighth. Mm. And, but listen, it's, it's, we're always going... I think we're all... I don't think there's a manager out there that we would all... Silva never got the cuddles that he needed, right, and the support put around him, and no one clearly pulled Sam to one side and said, mate, you know. Play more expansive. Now you're safe yeah, and stop and, having a go at the fans. Stop, whatever you do, stop mm. having a go at the fans. Have a go at journalists. Fans mm. will love it. Go and on. talk, yeah. talk yeah. to each other. Help yeah. whoever the man. So each it. of those mm. managers could have done better mm. if the club had helped them more, mm. in my view. 
even Benitez. But anyway, that's footy, isn't it? It is. Well, it's football. Yeah, it is. And whenever, I, I doubt there's anyone. I think if Everton could get Pep Guardiola from Everton, he's a moan. Mm. You know, I don't think you're ever, you're never going to keep 100% of them happy. Even, I, I hear it with Liverpool fans over Klopp. When they had, but look at it, look. they've had a sticky spell. Like he's, oh, it's it's done now. It's you know the end of last season. Trying to replace him now, and they, they could win that bleeding treble this year. Yeah, but look, look at the, the the three clubs right now who are probably the three best teams in the country, English. Yeah, Man City, obviously mm. Liverpool and Arsenal. Mm. They've all got managers who dominate the football clubs. Yeah, yeah. no one tells any of those three managers what to do. And the ones who've gone a bit more, you know, it's just you're part of the team. Mm. So Tottenham, okay, so the Aussie's got to get his feet under the table properly. But um, the Chelsea one, you know, they're just transient. So they just sack managers every two transient. years. They're just transient. But what's berserk about the Chelsea And then Man United, they've been successful. Walking. Yeah. Even despite getting to the managers every 18 months, they've still won trophy after trophy yeah. Chelsea, which is yeah. weird. And even this year when they've been poor, Mm. They've missed about what, they missed about four, five good chances against Liverpool. I know yeah. it wasn't Liverpool's full team, but they should have they should have had that they Carabao have Cup shown up. So should. he should really have a trophy there. But there you go. He, not, he might get one yet. Yeah, yeah. Now well, he could win the FA Cup, couldn't mm. he? You know they've got. Oh, you got City. Yeah, that was why it was tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, massively. It, it would be a surprise massively if they uh, win the semi final. <laughs> massively tongue in cheek. Yeah. It is crazy, right? We're done. We'll be on there more than a game, a quarter past two. So you've got eight minutes to get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or water or whatever beverage you want to. And join um, all the other people on the other side, yeah. The link will be here now. Ned will put it there for you. You don't have to go anywhere. Stay where you are if you want a little chat or a little listen, join in, and we'll see what happens. Um, I'll give... Simon, the last word says we've Everton have got ten games left, thirty points up for grabs. If we could get fifteen points, we should be safe. Just need the manager to take the handbrake. Oh. There you go. Mm. Sounds easy, that gonna get half points will be all right. I'll buy into that. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. Right. Take it easy. We'll see it again in it's now only seven minutes, aren't you lucky? See you in a bit. <laughs> 